Okay, in this segment, we're going to talk about the wiring of the fuel cell. It looks a lot worse than it really is. So, so bear with me and I'll have you through this just in a moment. It's, it's much simpler than it appears. <clears throat> okay, over here, we have a battery. We're going to go ahead and uh, in a few minutes, we're going to run it. We're going to do a test run so you can see it run. Okay, so we're, we're using an automobile battery to power. I'm going to take you starting with the uh, positive terminal on the battery. We're going to go through the whole system. Uh, it loops back because the cable's kind of long, comes over here. Right here's the positive lead coming in. This is a number six stranded copper conductor coming in. Goes through a screw lug into a circuit breaker, which I think is actually a thermal resistor. This is a 40 amp rated circuit breaker. This is available at, at uh, most any auto parts stores. It's a 12 volt direct current 40 amp circuit breaker. Cost about oh, $3 or so. We travel through the circuit breaker, exit here through another screw lug to a number 10 conductor. And the reason I had to go to a number 10 conductor was I had to attach a spade terminal here to attach to this relay. This is a very short run. We haven't had any heat problems so far on uh, the vehicle that I'm using one on. About 1,200 miles. We've had no trouble at all. The, sh the run is so short the number 10 will carry it. Into the 12 volt DC 40 amp relay. This relay, relay is used to power the system uh, or to interrupt power uh, it, uh, for some reason if something goes wrong or, or you just want to shut it down uh, you can do that from uh, the dashboard of the car. Through the power relay, it's hard to see under here on the bottom, but the terminal comes out. We go through a very short piece of number 10 conductor to another screw, uh, screw lug. Screw lug back to the number 6 conductor. We travel our way up through. This is a quick disconnect in case I have to service the unit. Uh, and, and disassemble. Normally this is covered with heat shrink tubing or electrical tape or some other protection since this is the positive terminal. I left it bare so you could see the uh, connector here. In through the wall of the vessel to the plates. Electricity pla passes from plate to plate, goes through the plate array, comes out the end over here through another number six conductor, in this case it's black, wall of the vessel out through another quick disconnect unit travels its way back to the battery, to the uh, negative terminal. If this were installed in a vehicle, and as I have installed in my vehicle, this just goes to a ground on the engine block or, or any handy place that you can get a good ground. In this case, it's connected to the battery since we don't have a vehicle to show you. All right, the other circuit is a control circuit. And in this case, it starts at the battery positive terminal. Uh, normally in the car, and this is very, very important, you want to power this circuit from a circuit or a terminal that is only energized when the ignition switch is in the on position. And this is so that in case you uh, forget to turn off a switch or something, when you turn your car off, you turn the system off. If you failed to do that and walked away from your car absentmindedly, this thing would continue to run and produce hydrogen and would eventually make enough hydrogen that you may have a problem. Okay, so we're from the circuit, in this case the battery terminal, but normally from an energized circuit when the key is on, comes down, travels through a toggle switch. This would be your override uh, interrupting toggle switch mounted on the dash or under the dash or somewhere you can get at it without any trouble. Through the toggle switch back to the relay uh, and, and I don't know if I mentioned the relay is an, an electromagnet uh, operated switch and this is the electromagnet portion circuit of the circuit. Through the relay comes out the bottom this terminal right or this conductor right here comes down it's kind of hard to see behind the other wire and in this case returns back to the negative terminal on the battery but uh, normally it's just like this ground here in fact you, uh, you could come right up here and put it in this connector with this one it just needs to go to any convenient ground on the car and that's the circuit and that's the electrical wiring for the cell it's very simple it's not very complicated at all I'll be making a diagram and uh, I'll include the diagram in the video uh, so that it might be a little easier to understand in the diagram not looking at all the components. Well we've got it all set up here. I've got some tap water in here and these units uh, I only advise you to run tap water in uh, because of heat issues. Um, I ran some vinegar in uh, the one in the Explorer. In fact this is the cell from the Explorer. This is a new vessel that I've mounted it in because I damaged the old vessel. Uh, we, we suffered some heat damage and the heat damage was because I put vinegar in in an attempt to clean it and, and ran it thinking everything would be fine but uh, the vinegar acted as a, as a really good electrolyte built up a lot of temperature and damaged the other vessel so I would advise you 
in these vessels uh, that, that you see used in the video here uh, don't use any electrolyte no baking soda no vinegar no salt anything like that for an electrolyte just use tap water uh, distilled water won't work very well in these you need some mineral content <clears throat> okay and uh, while I'm here I'll mention in the future pretty soon we're going to try to work out a replacement vessel for this if I can't find something readily made we will probably offer for sale it, it, as reasonably as possible uh, a fabricated vessel to replace this one uh, possibly made out of stainless steel or something may even have a little bit more water volume and some cooling capabilities just in case somebody wants to put some electrolyte in okay we've got this one running or, or not running but hooked up and ready to run I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and we'll do a little test run here and you'll see some hydrogen made all we need to do is turn on this toggle switch when we turn on the toggle switch you should, should see some hydrogen and oxygen production occur there we go and there is hydrogen and oxygen running out of the vessel <clears throat> I have the lid off right now just so you can see it a little better uh, normally the lids on here and, and there's a fitting here that supplies the uh, the uh, HHO gas to whatever purpose we're going to use it for and you'll notice it just took uh, not even a minute we have almost complete full saturation of the vessel with hydrogen and oxygen bubbles right there and uh, so there we go you've seen the wiring you've seen a little test run uh, this unit's ready to go back into my Explorer and uh, save me some gasoline so anyway we're finished with this segment